This magazine basket has been in my stash for a really long time, and I think it's time that we do something with it. When you look, it says I paid $6.99, but I think that I probably got this when it was 40% off because I probably wouldn't have paid that much for it. You can see that somebody else tried to attach other handles to it, and this one is missing. I am pretty sure these are just held on. Yep. So this is gonna screw right apart and that's what I'm gonna do. And so these are the parts that I'm left with. I have the two sides. I have these, which were the sides. These look like little ladders to me. So I'm gonna see how I can get these screws out of here. This piece, I'm not sure what to do with. And this, which is a simple piece of plywood, you might be able to make a sign or something out of it, but honestly, it's pretty flimsy. I'll probably just throw that away. And then, you know, I have a bunch of these that I will keep for something in the future. Okay, next I'm going to use some Dixie Bell mud in the color white. And I am going to use that to fill these holes. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is basically make this a more flat surface. I will sand this piece after the mud dries so that it's not quite as glossy and I won't have to use a slick stick. But in the meantime, this will get us to that next step. I am going to use my Redesign with Prima stencil Renata. It's a large stencil. And then I'm going to use some of Redesign with Prima's Rust Paste Effects with a little squeegee. This is a spread, the larger portion of the two pack of Spread Pals. And I'm just going to simply glide this over the surface taking care to hold my stencil down. I don't want it to lift up because I don't want the material to squish under it. This is really easy. Uh, it, any beginner can do this. The Rust FX is a perfect product to use for raised stencils. So this is the dried look of the raised stencil that I did using the Prima Rust Patina. And I love how it came out. Next, I'm going to give these each a paint with DIY's crinoline. You might see a theme happening here. Okay, I have done two coats with DIY in the color crinoline, and I also painted this with DIY's layered chocolate. I have given the sides and the back, because I also painted the back, a quick sand with 220 sandpaper, and now I'm going to wet distress the top to bring some of that green um, layer back now you don't have to because really the texture on this is beautiful exactly as it is but i do want to show some of that color which is why i chose to do it in a color so i'm going to get my rag a little bit damp here and try not to go overboard i tend to go overboard on a wet distress but i felt like this would be an easier solution i don't need all of it to come back i'm really just looking for a little bit of a hint of it. And you could do this with sandpaper, but I'm trying to actually keep this very simple. You can kind of see the green is starting to come out very subtly. I'm gonna keep at it. Okay, I have sanded and you can see the little bits of green popping through from the raised stencil. Now I'm gonna use some DIY clear wax and we're gonna seal it up. And this will make it nice and hard, but it will also slightly change the colors. I'm gonna to wait to seal the stem because, because this reactivates when it's wet. Um, I wanna do that last just in case some of the brown pulls through. I may choose to add some dark wax around some of the corners, but I don't want to do it from the stem. Okay, so I have decided I'm going to add just a little bit of dark wax around the corners just to give it a little bit more dimension. And I've put a little on here and now I'm going to wipe most of it off. And then I'm just going to start swirling around in the corners, keeping it super light. This is not about really making it grungy. It's just about adding a little bit of depth and texture. And you know me, if we are adding dark, 
we must also add a little bit of light. So I'm gonna do basically the same thing with DIY paint, white wax. I'm not gonna do this all over the pumpkin. I'm actually gonna focus this right up here on the stem. This will just make it seem like there's a little bit of light coming from the surface. Working that on there, only on one side. And then I will wipe it back. Let me show you how much depth that adds. You can see the two of these on which one looks a little bit more lively. And then you can see how adding the dark wax around the edges really does make a difference. Almost done. And this is what the completed pieces look like. I love how these came out. It's funny because I saw pumpkin right away when I saw them sitting on the shelves. And I love the little ladder too. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this what you saw coming? You may remember a few weeks ago, we were given this huge stash of stuff. My next projects come from this set. We had these wooden bowls. There were actually two sets. This is supposed to be like a flower pattern, but in my head, I saw pumpkin. So we're gonna wash these up and see if we can't get them clean and painted. So several of these bowls have some kind of stain on them, you can see here. And because very often that kind of ink or stain will come through paint, I'm gonna go ahead and shellac the inside of these bowls with a spray shellac. Uh, I'm painting these a dark color, so I don't really anticipate this being an issue, but I don't wanna paint them and then find out that it is. So just a quick spray should solve any future problems for me. And now I'll just let that dry. While those are drying, I'm going to paint my next set of bowls. This is actually six uh, smaller, I think they probably were salad bowls at one time, but I'm gonna use DIY paint in the color Gypsy. I think this is a great sagey fall color and it's gonna work really well with the oranges and the creams that I have in my booth. Uh, these will probably go to market with us because I think they'll be great with some of the bowl fillers that I've made. And so I am just gonna go ahead and give this two coats of paint. I did not need to shellac them because there wasn't any, really anything that was going to show through. After two coats of paint, I am gonna use some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna go ahead and make this distressed looking. You could have wet distressed, but I'm gonna say I am not usually a fan of wet distressing. I do much better with sandpaper. After sanding, I give them a good dust. Then I am gonna use DIY paints, clear wax, and wax them completely. I will say you can definitely see that there is a difference in the color. If you have never used DIY paint before, understand this is a clay-based paint and not a chalk paint, which means you're gonna have this color transition. I have these salad bowls that um, have now been shellacked, and I am going to use my pumpkin spice color that I made up using DIY paint fire starter and layered chocolate. Uh, I showed this in last week's video and you see it's a really nice warm autumn color. And while these look like flower bowls by painting them orange and then doing a little distressing and maybe a little dark wax, I haven't decided until the end, then I'm gonna make them look like pumpkin bowls instead. I didn't film the remaining of the process on painting these bowls because it was exactly the same as the green. I chose not to use any of the white wax or dark wax because once they were distressed, I thought they were basically perfect as they are. I would love to hear your opinion. Do you like these colors? Typically, I think most people would just go with a natural white or a cream, but I thought with fall, this was lovely. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. Links are in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. These lovely trays also came in that stash that I got from a, um, a local viewer who gave us a ton of stuff. So I am going to give these a wash and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna paint them crinoline 
along with these pieces. My son just unscrewed the bottom pieces for me while I was working on something else. So I'm gonna batch paint these five items together. Again, just a really quick makeover. It's amazing what a little bit of paint and distressing can do to make something look so wonderful and change so dramatically. I really enjoy painting silver and little pieces like this, and I love displaying them even more. I found this old shaker box in the stash that was given to us as well. It's really beautiful but the bottom is very stained so I am going to try to very carefully paint just the bottom leaving the rest wood. I used DIY paint and the color, color crinoline and now I am going to use some of JRV's decoupage paper and put some decoupage paper in the bottom. I've decided rather than making this like a tray that you could sit that we're actually going to be able to hang it. So I'm just going to rough cut it out just to make it easier to cut. And then I'm going to cut inside of the circle that I drew with the outside of the box. My circle, while pretty close, was not quite close enough. So I just put the paper down and then I'm using my finger to kind of create a crease around the edge so that I know exactly how much more paper to cut off. If you look closely, you'll be able to see the little edge and that's where I'm gonna cut. While normally I love to use DIY paints, liquid patina for decoupage paper, this case, JRV's paper is pretty thick. When using heavier paper, I actually prefer Redesign with Prima's decoupage gel. It seems to be a little bit thicker and holds the heavier weight papers to the surface a lot easier. When adding a piece like this, that's gonna be basically the entire bottom, the easiest thing to do is fold it in half, get it near the center, and then slowly lay it down and stretch it out. That you'll find is a lot easier than trying to put it off to the side and then lay it down. At least that's my experience. Then you can simply use a squeegee or your hand and smooth it down. Because JRV paper is thick, it does not tear easily, which is a really nice thing about it. I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and then I'm going to put another layer of the decoupage medium on top. This has some open edges, so I'm just using my brush that I used to kind of poke the paper down into those slits where it's still a tiny bit too large. Because this wood is old and dry, I'm going to go ahead and use DIY paints, clear wax to seal it in, give it some nourishment, and make it good for many years to come. And here's a peek at it in a little fall setting. I, I paired it with a rabbit because I wanted to show that it was really all season and the little rabbit has a bunch of pumpkins in his satchel on the back. I also thought this was cute for being able to hold little items on the shelf. Let me know what you think. Is it cute for fall too? Did you know that at VintageBeeDesign.com, we not only carry all the beautiful products that you see us make here, along with the DIY products that we use to create them, but we also carry amazing home decor. Whether it's everyday, fall, Halloween, Christmas, we've got it in stock. So be sure to check out VintageBeeDesign.com so that we can help set you up with the most amazing home decor. And for my last project, I made these little pumpkins out of the rest of the orange fabric that I had left in my craft stash. I designed this pattern basically, I just wanted it to be a bowl filler. Just tracing these out and then cut onto two pieces and I'm adding the little insert and I sew them together, then use pinking shears to cut them out. After they're sewn together and stuffed, I then sew the ridges. So I've been sewing up these little tiny pumpkins out of some fabric that I have and we have cut up some spindles. I'm using about one and a half of these little joints and then on the bandsaw we cut it at an angle and they will fit nicely in my little hole. So I'm going to use some Fusion Bayberry to paint them all up and then I'll give them a quick distress with 220 grit sandpaper. I sanded the little stems, added a homespun ribbon, and a little stamped tag that says fall. 
and I think these came out really cute. You've actually probably seen them in many of the projects that I've been showing to you because I've been using them as accessories in the photos. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like videos like this, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share with a friend. It really helps.